I'm not really sure what to make of this AstraZeneca-Oxford trial. There's confusion about whether it's 60% efficacy, whether it's 90%. What exactly happened? Well, it is a little bit unclear, but let's start with what we think we know, which is some of the patients that were in their phase three clinical trial ended up getting a half dose of their of the initial uh, uh, inoculation. And it turns out that the group that got that half dose followed by a boost had a much higher rate of protection from COVID-19 disease than the group that got the dosing schedule that the company wanted to give to everybody. Um, and that was significant. It was 90% versus 62%. Um, the problem becomes, um, it's not clear how that mistake was made, where that mistake was made in terms of giving the half dose. It's also not clear what subpopulation was given that half dose. Was it broad across right. all age groups? Was it focused on particular age groups? Was it focused on particular sites of the study? So there's a lot of details to try to understand what that 90% efficacy truly means. Um, and at the end of the day, it's probably going to mean that they need to restart a good deal of this phase three clinical trial to make sure that they get the right data for that highly effective dosing schedule that they uh, found by chance. What does it mean, Dr. Pekosh, going forward? So you're right, you know, there, there's, I think I read somewhere that it was, um, that sub-trial was basically for uh, people under 50, or, uh, you know, everyone that was administered the dose and a half was under 55 years old. But is it a communication problem? Is there a concern about how these, you know, how these trials are done? Or will people just interpret it as we're going too fast? And so they'll be uncertain about actually taking the vaccine. Yeah, it's partially a communication trial. It's also partially the fact that the data hasn't been released outside of press releases that are a little bit vague in terms of some of the details. Um, it's important to understand that vaccines can work differently in different age groups. They can also work differently with respect to individuals who have certain pre-existing medical conditions. So a phase three trial is really meant to go across all of those groups to try to understand how broadly a vaccine works. And again, this doesn't seem to have happened with this reduced dosing schedule. And so that is going to be something that the company has to address. I think these days of COVID-19 vaccines being under such scrutiny too, um, every small mistake that's being made is amplified. And a lack of communication about really what's going on then uh, just doesn't serve the public interest because it foster some doubts about a vaccine, which may in fact be quite good. What do we know about what's going on in Europe, Dr. Petkosh? So it seems that the number of infected is going down, but actually the number of hospitalization is going the other way. So more people are hospitalized and I think there's a higher death rate than before. Is it just, you know, the lagging effect or is there something more sinister at play? Well, right now, we expected to see that lag effect, which is hospitalizations usually lag cases by, in, by up to a week, um, and deaths really lag hospitalizations by also up to a week. It's the nature of COVID-19 disease and the long-term effects that it has in terms of people struggling with the disease. So it's great to see the case numbers going down. One would expect in about a week to see the hospitalizations and deaths also start going down, which is going to reflect the case numbers going down. Um, I haven't seen any epidemiological data about the people that are being hospitalized, so that's the next thing that's going to be very important to capture. Who are the people that are getting sick, and how, um, how is the treatment regimens that were established during the first six to nine months of this pandemic, how are they continuing to work as we progress into the in, into um, uh, deeper and deeper into the pandemic. So the lag is expected. Um, understanding who's getting seriously ill now is going to be the important thing um, to make sure that we see if there's any shift in the demographics of people that are suffering that severe disease.